Greetings in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Welcome to Moments with Truth, which is a television outreach of the five gospel halls here in Tobago. We sincerely pray that you will be blessed as you view today's program. Our study in the Gospel of John brings us today to the ninth chapter where we learn that Jesus is the answer to both physical and spiritual blindness. And so a reading from chapter 9 in the Gospel of John, and the chapter is fairly long, 41 verses, we're not going to read all the verses, we'll read a few of the verses, first of all from verse 1 to verse 7. Where it says, And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither hath this man sinned nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night comes when no man can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle. And he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay and said unto him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is by interpretation sent. He went his way, therefore, and washed, and came, seeing. Then verse 16 tells us, Therefore said some of the Pharisees, This man is not of God, because he keepeth not the Sabbath day. Others said, How can a man that is a sinner do such miracles? And there was a division among them. Verse 39, And Jesus said, For judgment I am come into the world that they which see not might see, and that they which see might be made blind. And some of the Pharisees which were with him heard these words and said unto him, Are we blind also? Jesus said unto them, If you were blind, ye should have no sin, but now you say, We see, therefore your sin remains. So the chapter begins with the Lord Jesus educating his disciples as to the reason a man, a certain man, was born blind. The disciples suggested that the man's condition was the result either of the man's own sin or the sin of his parents. The Lord Jesus corrected their thinking. He told them that the man was born blind so that he, Jesus, would come along and heal him so that God's work may be seen in the healing of the man. Then the Lord Jesus healed the man. Now the chapter ends with Jesus condemning the religious leaders in their blindness. Now blindness is perhaps our most feared of all disabilities. If we are given the choice of losing our arms or our legs, or a sense of smelling or hearing or seeing, most of us will choose to keep our sight, to keep our vision. We all want, above all things, to be able to see. Now, the story of Samson may be the best known blind story in the Bible, perhaps in all literature. 
Most of us can say something about the story of Samson and Delilah. The part of the story that the majority of us remember is that she arranged to have his hair cut. We sympathize with him because this is how he lost his extraordinary strength. But for Samson, his greatest loss, the loss for which he wanted to wreak vengeance against the Philistines, the loss for which he was willing to die, was the loss of his eyes. The Bible tells us that as his hair began to grow again, and as his strength returned, he prayed to God. And this is his prayer. And Samson called unto the Lord and said, O Lord God, remember me, I pray you, and strengthen me, I pray you, only this once, O God, that I may be at once avenged of the Philistines for my two eyes. And Samson took hold of the two middle pillars upon which the house stood and on which it was borne up of the one with his right hand and of the other with his left. And Samson said, let me die with the Philistines. And he bowed himself with all his might and the house fell upon the lords and upon all the people that were therein. So the dead which he slew, slew at his death were more than they which he slew in his life. Judges chapter 16 verses 28 to 30. Samson got his strength back. He could not regain his sight. And he lost his life. He was content to die avenging his enemies who blinded him. You know we learned the nursery rhyme, three blind mice, when we were too young to understand what it meant. Remember how it goes? Three blind mice, three blind mice, see how they run, see how they run. They all run up, run after the farmer's wife, who cut off their tail with a carving knife. Did you ever see such a thing in your life as three blind mice? But we were never told that these three blind mice represented three British Christians known as the Cambridge Three. These men gave their lives during the Protestant Reformation of the early 1500s. They were martyrs, and their names were Thomas Cranmer, Nicholas Radley, and Hugh Latimer. And they were not blind at all. They believed and taught the central doctrine of Martin Luther and the other German reformers. They believed that salvation is by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone, to the glory of God alone. They may have had their tails cut off, so to speak, but it was because they had their eyes opened. Before the Reformation, Cranmer, Radley, and Latimer relied for their salvation on their good works and in obeying various rules of the official religion. They were blinded by religion. Then Christ opened their eyes through the light of the gospel. They rested in the completed work of the Lord Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary. They came out of spiritual darkness into the light of God. They were once blind, but they died with their spiritual eyes wide open. So Samson was physically blind. The Cambridge Three received spiritual sight. Now John chapter 9 is about blindness. Physical blindness as well as physical, spiritual blindness. 
And so the man's journey, the man whom we read about there in this Gospel of John chapter 9, his journey began in physical blindness. It ended in physical sight. You know, the Bible has no record of anyone giving sight to blind people. Only Jesus. The healed man challenged the religious leaders with this fact. Since the world began, it was never heard, he said to the Pharisees, that any man opened the eyes of one that was born blind. The record of physical healing is scattered all through the Old and New Testament. Several prophets of the Old Testament and apostles of the New Testament performed miracles. But only the Lord Jesus Christ is recorded to have opened blinded eyes. Seven blind men had their healings recorded in the New Testament. The, no, the most notable ones are Zacchaeus in Mark and Luke, and this man in John and chapter 9. But this miracle of John was so impressive that the Pharisees could not believe it. And that is why they called the man's parents. They needed proof that this man was really blind from birth and that he had really been healed. You see, if the Pharisees had believed the bold declaration of the Lord Jesus, which he already gave to them in John chapter 5, John chapter 8, then this healing would not have surprised them. Jesus had already said to them in John chapter 8 and verse 12, I am the light of the world. You know, we sometimes sing, he's able, he's able, I know he's able. I know my Lord is able to carry me through. He heals the brokenhearted. He sets the captive free. He makes the lame to walk again and makes the blind to see. Because he's able, he's able, I know he's able. I know my Lord is able to carry me through. He makes the blind to see. Christ has the power to deliver the blind man or woman from the world of darkness. He has the power to bring them out of their world of darkness into his marvelous light. So John gives us the details of how it happened. The Lord Jesus saw the man and he simply spat on the ground, made clay of the spittle, John tells us, anointed the man's eyes with the clay, then sent him to the pool of Siloam to wash his eyes. The man did just as Jesus commanded, and for the first time in his life, he began to see his journey from physical darkness to physical light was completed. But this man also journeyed from spiritual blindness to spiritual light, spiritual sight. You know, we read in 2 Corinthians and chapter 4 verses 3 to 6 that if our gospel is hid it is hid to them that are lost in whom the God of this world that is Satan hath blinded the minds of them that do not believe lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ who is the image of God should shine unto them. For we preach not our, our, ourselves, but Christ Jesus, the Lord. You know, men and women, all of us, we need to hear the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is in the hearing and believing of the gospel of the Lord Jesus that men and women are released from the blindness in which 
The evil one holds us, holds them. John tells the story in chapter 5 of Jesus healing a man who was lame for 38 years. And shortly after, Jesus saw the man and gave to him this solemn warning. Sin no more, lest a worse thing come upon you. His physical condition was bad, this layman, and he was delivered. But his spiritual condition was worse. And the Lord Jesus had a similar concern for this blind man. He was blind from birth. It was clear by the way he dialogued with the Pharisees that he appreciated that Jesus healed him, gave him his sight back. He was glad for what Jesus did to him. You know, no one in the Gospels showed so much fearlessness in confronting the Pharisees as this man did. The Pharisees had met their match. We read from verse 24, John chapter 9, Then again called they the man that was blind, and said unto him, Give God the praise. We know that this man is a sinner. He, the man, answered and said, Whether he be a sinner or no, I don't know. But one thing I know, that whereas I was blind, now I see. Then said they to him again, What did he to thee? How opened he thine eyes? He answered them, I have told you already, and you did not hear. Why would you hear it again? Will you also be his disciples? Then they reviled him and said, You are his disciples, meaning you are Jesus' disciples, Disciple, but we are Moses' disciples. We know that God spake unto Moses. As for this fellow, meaning Jesus, we know not from where he is. And the man answered with confidence and with boldness and said unto them, Why, here Rin is a marvelous thing that you know not from whence he is, and yet he has opened mine eyes. Now we know that God hears not sinners, but if any man be a worshiper of God and doeth his will, him he heareth. Since the world began, the man says, was it not heard, it was never heard, that any man opened the eyes of one that was born blind? If this man, if Jesus was not of God, he could do nothing. The man contended. They answered and said unto him, You were all together born in sin. And do you teach us? And they cast him out. You see, the Pharisees lost the battle of reason with this man. So they resorted to their only options. They insulted him, then they expelled him from the synagogue. But the journey to this man's spiritual healing had begun. He had already experienced the physical healing, blind from birth. The Lord Jesus came along and gave him his sight back. He was physically healed. But this man also needed spiritual healing. He was spiritually blind. He also needed spiritual sight. You see, there are some things that he knew, this man knew, and believed about his healer, Jesus. He knew that it was a man named Jesus who healed him, according to verse 11. In verse 17, he believed that Jesus was a prophet. 
According to verse 25, he could not say whether Jesus was a sinner or not. But according to verses 32 and 33, he knew that Jesus was a unique healer and therefore was from God. There are some things that he knew, some things he did not know. And one important fact that this man did not know that the Lord Jesus had to bring to his attention was this that Jesus said to him. And what Jesus said to him is central to the gospel story. What the Lord Jesus Christ brought before him was the answer to the most important question. Who is Jesus? Who is this man that gave him his sight? Who is this man who took away the blindness that I experienced for all my life? Who is Jesus? See, the religious leaders, they expelled the man as he took side with the Lord Jesus Christ. But the Lord Jesus Christ, this man having been expelled from the synagogue, the Lord Jesus Christ met this man and asked him this most important question. Do you believe on the Son of God? You know, a more important question cannot be asked. And so we pose this same question to you, our listener. Do you believe in the Son of God? You see, this man was, he was eager to believe. He had an encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus opened his eyes when he was blind. And he was eager to, to place his faith in this one who would open his eyes if he could only tell who he was. And so he answered and said, Who is he, Lord? The man asked, the Lord Jesus Christ asked him, Do you believe in the Son of God? The man answered, Who is he, Lord, that I might believe on him? And Jesus said unto him, You have both seen him as a result of the miracle of the healing that he experienced, the Lord Jesus Christ is now able to say unto him, You have now seen him, and it is he that talks with you. The man said, Lord, I believe, and worshipped him. So that first Jesus gave to this man physical sight. He gave physical sight to the man born physically blind. But even more important than giving physical sight, the Lord gave spiritual sight to this man who was born spiritual, spiritually blind. You know, the whole world was lost in the darkness of sin. But the light of the world is Jesus. Like sunshine at noonday, his glory shines in. The light of the world is Jesus. So you dwellers in darkness with sin-blinded eyes. The light of the world is Jesus. Go wash at his bidding and light will arise. The light of the world is Jesus. Come to the light. It is shining for thee. Sweetly the light has dawned upon me. Once I was blind, the songwriter said, but now I can see the light of the world is Jesus. Have you believed in the Son of God? Now this is what John wanted. It was his stated intention for writing his gospel. He said that Jesus worked a lot of miracles that he could have chosen from in writing his book. But he recorded only eight. He said that he recorded the story, the story of the healing of this blind man, this man born blind, in order that we might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing 
we might have life through his name. Have you believed that Jesus is the Son of God? Are you spiritually blind? Or have you received the spiritual sight that Jesus offers? Jesus came into the world to make blind men see. But they must acknowledge their blindness. Those who would not acknowledge their blindness would remain blind. If you have re never received the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, we beg you to do so now. Remember what John said in chapter 3 and verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. It is our prayer that you would see your need for the Lord Jesus, that you see your spiritual blindness and trust him and receive your spiritual sight. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you again for your word and we ask that by your mighty power, by the power of the Holy Spirit, that the eyes of men and women will be opened, that they'll trust the Lord Jesus Christ as their savior, receive spiritual sights, get to know the Lord Jesus Christ as their own, see him with spiritual eyes, trust him as their savior, and be saved for time and for eternity, for Christ Jesus' sake. Amen. Thank you for viewing today's program. We invite you to contact us at any of the media advertised or visit us at any of the meetings that appear on the screen. Dear friends, remember that Jesus saves, he keeps, and he satisfies. May God bless you.